In this episode of Locally Grown, we're joining Robin and Christine in historic Richmond Town. Some of the buildings are plain, maybe a simple structure with a small sign denoting its age and former use. Others are more intricate, boasting sweeping architectural features and housing the memories and history of families and businesses who once called Richmond Town and Staten Island home. On certain days, a trip to historic Richmond's town Living History Village may mean a visit from someone filled with stories from the past, perhaps a blacksmith explaining how his trade was applied in the 1800s, or the local printer explaining how photos and pamphlets were made centuries ago. Occasionally, it's a large group of people reenacting a battle from Staten Island's past when the British troops occupied the town. Today, Robin and Christine take a trip into the past with Luke Boyd, the village director of education and public programs, who is more than happy to share the town's unique and significant role it continues to play in Staten Island's history. Historic Richmond Town was founded as the Staten Island Historical Society in 1856, but it wasn't until the 20th century that the Staten Island Historical Society came to its rescue by preserving its structures, collecting local history that celebrates the diverse and rich history of the area. Hello everyone. Welcome to this edition of Locally Grown. I'm Robin Lefkowitz, Executive Vice President for Northfield Bank. And I am Christine Dehart, broker owner of Simon Real Estate. And we are so pleased to be standing here at historic Richmond Town, basically in front of the courthouse. And uh, we are joined by a lovely historian. Hello everybody, Luke Boyd, Director of Education and Public Programs here at Historic Richmond Town. Thanks for joining us, ladies. Absolutely, we're so excited by this. So everyone's gonna learn the history of Richmond Town. Perhaps they've driven past it. Perhaps they've come to the fair. Maybe they've seen some reenactments over the years. But really understanding the history, this place is so cool. It's steeped in history. And yeah, the bus goes by, people drive by, right. and they come to a fair, they come to an event, but there's so much beneath the surface. Right. And there's so much history of the entire island that's expressed here in this acreage. It's a very special place, and I can't wait to share it with you. Great. So I just want to throw out a little bit of uh, a little knowledge of what I know, which sure. isn't as much as you know, no, but... Uh, so before it got the name of Richmond Town, it was called Cockles Town. That's right. And it was because of the shells that were found from Great Kills, which was the clams and the oysters, and Christine's family actually owned the oyster beds. And so now we actually owned, still own, the rights to how to actually farm the oysters and harvest them. Staten Island was all about oystering back in the day. And you're absolutely right. There was a huge pile of oysters, most likely deposited by uh, native people for a long, long time, created this big thing called a midden. Big, like a big compacted pile of oyster shells. And that was found basically right in the center of town by Arthur Kill Road and Richmond Road. Okay. And that is what inspired the name of Cockles Town. So probably very... those D-Hots were leaving our shells behind the whole time. Just saying. Yeah. Part of the history, exactly. And yeah, we date back to 1887. Not as far back as you go. I'm back since the 1600s. Yes, so there you go. But, One of the um, first families. She, Correct. Yes, exactly. Correct. So now this was the courthouse. On display at Richmond Town is the third country courthouse, built in 1837. Evidence of the first courthouse can be seen in the form of a wooden frame at the corner of Arthur Kill and Richmond Road. A second courthouse was eventually destroyed by a fire in the 1940s. Its brick ruin can be found nearby. And so this building served as the center of government in Staten Island from 1837 until the early 20th century. And so we know in 1898, Staten Island becomes a part of New York City, the Incorporation Act, when Staten Island joins with Queens and the Bronx, all part of New York City. And so before that, Staten Island was not part of New York City. It was its own place within New York State. And aren't we trying to get back there now? <laughs> well, it's where everybody would summer. Yes, that's They'd true, too. They come here to uh, vacation. Leisure, yes. exactly. South Beach, yep, and all of that yes. sort of beautiful uh, vacation land stuff. Um, so when the reincorporation happens, the center of business moves north to St. George, and that's where the new courthouse is built, and the ferry service and all of that gravitational pull takes everyone up there, and Richmond Town, as it was then known, becomes kind of sleepy and kind of quiet because this courthouse is decommissioned, and the sort of center of life, kind of the pulse of life, leaves this area, which would make way for restorationists to come in and preserve the village in the decades to follow. Well, it's in amazing shape. It is. 
It's a great landmark. It's got that great uh, trap rock exterior that's painted in that beautiful color, and the white really pops off of it. And every building on our campus has seen a lot of attention over the years um, from restoration departments, from preservationists who have endeavored to bring a building back to a certain time of its life, right? Because in many of these buildings, like the Edwards Barton across the street, people lived in these buildings until the 1960s in some cases. And so we're trying to restore them back to the 1860s or the 1870s or 80s. And that takes a lot of work to strip back the years of reuse and uh, sure. modifications made to a property over time. The historic buildings dotting the historic Richmond Towns property aren't all original to the site. Renovations on the existing buildings began in 1933, and after the museum opened up in the former county clerk and surrogate's office, the Staten Island Historical Society acquired several other buildings. A lot of, yeah, sort of archaeology one can do by looking at a building and sort of dating it yourself. Some of our buildings are not on permanent footing, they're on more temporary footing. Some of them had new foundations poured in the 1960s, 70s, or 80s when they were moved here. Um, it's pretty amazing to look back. There's a house across the street, the Christopher House. I remember when that was moved here. Yeah, so it was a pile of stone right. in like the bicentennial. And it was, and it was built there, yes. little pieces of it. Exactly, so that came from the Willowbrook neighborhood. And then it was reconstituted here in the 1960s and 70s. And it was a big project. It's one of our only stone houses on the property. And what's amazing about the Christopher House is that it has a tie to the American Revolution. And so we believe that the Christopher family, the last name Christopher who lived there, were part of the Committee of Safety, which was a sort of secret band of concerned citizens who would relay correspondence to the government in Philadelphia. So as the declaration is being drafted, and as the delegates of the, uh, the convention are coming together in Philadelphia, there are groups throughout the colonies who are meeting in secret and reporting on the movements of the British and gathering intelligence and sending it into Philadelphia. And we believe Christopher family was one of those families and that the committees of safety met inside the Christopher house. So it's very historic. Very cool. Are all of the buildings original to Staten Island? Yes, so that is true. So even though some of the buildings were moved here from different places, they're all Staten Island buildings. So nothing came from Jersey, nothing came from Brooklyn. Everything here is pure Staten Island in terms of it was born here. In terms See of that? Buildings. I Locally like that part. Grown. Historic Richmond Town has exciting events throughout the year, including concerts, Old Home Day, artist talks, blacksmithing, reenactments, and candle dipping demonstrations, the Apprentice Program, and much more. It's not about a great man or woman of history or a rich person that owned a house. It's about the everyday folk that built up this place, built up this village, built up this island, and contributed to the creation of this country. And so it's a Staten Island story, but it's also an American story. And it's a story of the everyday folk who worked in the fields, worked in the shops, you know, worked over a hearth, sweating over in a, in a big dress. All of the texture of that experience is part of this living history that we tell. Among the most popular events are the historic reenactments. In 2021 and 2022, the town brought the Revolutionary War to life by reenacting a battle that saw the British Redcoats invade the not yet historic Richmond town. We're going to be hopefully restarting some kind of civil war programming in the coming future. Um, but basically, we transformed this landscape into a British-occupied hamlet in the 1770s. And we had a great contingent of Crown forces in June. So we had a lot of redcoats, and they were invading the village from the east. And so we had some colonial guys, some loyalists, and some militia who actually mobilized to repel those forces. And we had a couple of folks representing indigenous people who would have allied, in some cases, with the British or with the American Patriot forces. So that was a wonderful program, and it's a slow beginning to restart programs like that. You're right, it's been a number of years since we had reenactments proper, and so it takes time to build sure. that name recognition and an audience and an expectation. But we're looking forward to the 250th of the American founding in 2026. Wasn't Welcome. this like the tallest point? This at is, one point in the town. This is pretty impressive. So you got a big hill to our north, but you're right. If you were to imagine that this hill was denuded of trees, right? Yes, Cutting down right. the trees for wood to build our houses. Sure. If one was standing in the courthouse, you would probably have a pretty good view and you're looking north. So you're looking north to the rest of Manhattan. So even right. though this was the center of Staten Island, it was pointing in a certain direction. And this country is expanding and it's growing. You know, the idea of manifest destiny, that we're, that we're sort of destined to sort of rule this continent. And the greatness of this structure, which connotes Greece 
sort of Greco-Roman concepts um, speaks that sort of a temple of justice. Sure. As it were. Historic Richmond Town is Staten Island's largest and oldest cultural institution. Made up of more than 30 separate structures, some of which date back to the 1660s, the site possesses some of the most celebrated and storied historical items of American history. There are more than 100,000 artifacts, photographs, and archival collections from different time periods. We're in the heart of the center of the square here. here and I know we talked a little bit about the reenactments. So let's talk a few minutes about like, what are they reenacting? We've done reenactments here for a long time. And what we started doing during the pandemic was focusing on Revolutionary War programming. So this past June, we had a reenactment that took place right on the street. So what we did was we tried to recreate when the British were invading this island. They were using it as a staging area for their invasions in Brooklyn and Long Island and all over New York area. And so Staten Island was very loyalist. People were really into the king at the time. That did change. <laughs> so in this reenactment, which took place right on the street, we had British soldiers marching down from Center Street, right down this way, down this street. And as they were marching in formation, we had reenactors playing colonists and militia firing from the sides of the street. Sort of like a scene in The Patriot, if you can imagine. I can, sort of that's high... exactly what I'm thinking Exactly, of. It's very Gibson, it was like, very, it was very dramatic. Yeah, yes. and so it was really cinematic. And we had all the crowd on one side of the lawn here and they were just enraptured by the drama. And we also had some folks playing indigenous people. And indigenous people in the conflict during the revolution were kind of on both sides. Some were allied with the British, some were allied with the Americans or the Patriots. And basically they were trying to see what, who would win the conflict, who they want to be on the winning side, to the best advantage for them because the indigenous people were also got a raw deal in all of this, losing their sacred ancestral homeland. Sure. And that's something that we're trying to touch on as well. As you can see, Boyd and the village has no problem bringing this dichotomy to light, as well as telling the story of what the area's indigenous people were doing at that time. Now you know that the Lenape people lived here for centuries, for thousands of Absolutely. years before colonial conquest. Yes. And so something that we're trying to do is balance that interpretation. And so we started building a native encampment just a few yards past the ice cream shop, right over there you can just see it. You mean past the Boardwalk Empire backdrop of yes. historic Richmond Town? Exactly, <laughs> some cinematic history that took place right here. So why don't we walk over and take We a have walk. one of our... <laughs> yes, wow. one, of, one of my staff. One of my educators, Selena, getting, getting to work. So we're open through the rest of September. You can right. come visit us Wednesday through Sunday awesome. for Open Village. And we picked an Open Village day. You yes. certainly did. Yeah, it's great. We did. Yeah, so we're kind of in the center of the administrative heart of Richmond Town. Sure. And the, cur the surrogates courthouse is right to our, to our right here. So if you think of the surrogates court, basically probate, you know, yeah. property, estate, yeah. when someone dies, what happens to their property, all that stuff would have happened here in this building, built in 1848. In the 21st century, <laughs> this structure was exactly. built. And so it's one of the younger structures on the property, yes. uh, but of course, one of the beloved aspects of historic Richmond town, one of our tenants, Eggers Ice Cream. So this was a stage prop for Boardwalk Empire. Yes. And in season three, I believe, the, the main baddie, Chip Rossetti, played by Bobby Cannavale, would have had many a very cheap meal inside this diner. There was a gas station set up here. And if you look closely in some of those scenes from season three of Boardwalk Empire, you can see the courthouse, you can see the contours of Richmond Town. But that cinematic history is still here in the form of this now converted ice cream shop. I actually well, think it's very cool. I think so, but I think having Eggers be a part of it, when Eggers has been around for, I mean, I know since my father was a kid, mm -hmm. he went to Eggers. Um, it was over by where I live in Westerly, right. but sure. uh, I think that's such a great addition to the historic Richmond town. It is, it's a Staten Island institution Plus it's in its the own best right. ice cream there is. So. <laughs> One of the volunteers of Richmond Town that helped open that and had the food handlers license for that was, I call her my aunt, it's actually my mother's best friend since childhood. My Aunt Fran wow. was actually a part of that. Mm. So that everybody, if they want to check out your hours, more history, That's right. uh, make a donation, volunteer. Yes, everything can be found at historicrichmondtown.org. So, so easy. But thank you so much, Luke, for being part of our history with Locally Grown. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget to check us out at our YouTube channel.
Mr. Mayor, fellow members of the City Council, in less than two hours, liquor will be declared illegal by decree of the distinguished gentlemen of our nation's Congress. To those beautiful, ignorant bastards. Yeah. <laughs>